Hobbyers. And for the next set, I wanted to do something different. So, this is the Hasegawa Eggplane Series, the F-15 Eagle. So I am on my F-15 kick. And this is a tiny plane. It shouldn't be a very complex build. Um, <laughs> but it's an egg plane. Uh, I had to wait about a month to get this because it comes from Japan. They don't, they don't really have a market for them here in the U.S. But we shall begin. It's a relatively straightforward kit. Uh, it's going to be nice not to have to put a gazillion decals on it. Still going to have a fair amount to put on, but actually this is only for half because I'm not putting both Japanese and U.S. insignias on it. And I'm judging by the coloration, I'm probably only going to use half of these decals. Because, yeah, it looks like I'm going to use this one, not that one. And then I'm going to use... Yeah, so that looks like about right. And then, you know, of course I'll be using the Eagle, whereas they won't be. They're probably using that thing. Uh, those will probably be the tail numbers on mine. And, of course, the USA. They are, they are kind of greenish, which is weird, since there's no green on the aircraft from what I see of it in the colors. So, we're going to get see how quick this thing actually goes together, seeing as how the instructions are pretty much... Well, yeah, looks like there's one page of instructions for the assembly. This one should go together pretty quick. I am hoping. And I'm going to use the colors I have because, well, it's probably going to take me the most time. is going to be painting, masking, and decaling. So, let's get this thing put together. First, we start with the good old bagging all right and down we go not that anymore hey that looks pretty good actually it does look like it's a little scuffed up on the top there that's got me concerned I am really tired of messing around with canopies all right, I. Oh, nope, it was just some mold release or something. It kind of wiped right off of there. Be some mess out of that last canopy I did for the 148. It had a line running down it. This is actually a real nice canopy. I might just hit it with a lint free cloth and call it done. There's that. We'll slide that back in there, though. Now let's see how the fit does. Oh, that's pretty straightforward. A little snippy snip. All in all, so far I've got about an hour rolled into this little model. Eggplane's going to be kind of crazy. It's just a little bitty thing when it's done, and it's it's just kind of crazy. But I have already taken them off, cleaned up all the parts, and this is all the parts. <laughs> That's it. There's no more parts. I haven't put anything together yet except for the pilot head, and I did that so that I could do some sanding, but now I think it's time for me to do what assembly I'm going to do, and that's it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put some glue on this guy, and I guess I'm going to start putting some pieces on pegs so that I can paint them up. So, and I'll just start putting pieces, and then I might even throw some primer on this guy. Okay, that's a standard painter's mask that I picked up at Lowe's. Uh, it's pretty important. I usually don't wear it, but uh, 
I'm also usually painting with acrylics like Vallejo or Tamiya. But in this case, I am trying to wander into the lacquer primers because I'm noticing I can get more colors. And lacquer paints are just a harder, tougher base to work with when I'm doing weathering or using other chemicals. So here I'm using Mr. Level. It's Mr. Sur <laughs> Let me get it right. <laughs> it's Mr. Leveling Thinner that I'm using with Mr. Surfacer 1500. Um, and I'm first time I've ever done it, so I'm kind of monkeying with it, trying to get it to the right consistency. And this is me pulling out my jar of just whatever cheapest lacquer thinner you can buy at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Target, wherever you got to get it. And that's just me cleaning the tip. So I'm only using the cheap thinner for cleaning. I use it to clean my airbrushes, tools, stuff like that. So I always keep, I've always had a jug of that around. Now I'm just trying to see if everything's flowing right. And it seems to be working right. <laughs> I've got to find different places on my ju trash jar there. And now I'm just going to put a nice light coats on here and there just to protect the plastic and get ready for the layers of paint that are going to fall up. There is... I have to narrate over this because between the air compressor that is right below the table to the left of my leg, and I do not have a tank on that one, so it is constantly, when I push the airbrush button, it's running. And that's a homemade spray booth that I kind of got the basic idea from Vegeta 18-something or other. I can't remember his numbers, but he's a YouTuber. And he used a double fan, a double window fan, uh, and I just converted that into the back on an old used-up tub that I had from my daughter's clothes that she's outgrown. <laughs> and then my second daughter also outgrew them, so then they go to the donate pile, and I had an extra tub. So, and I just used the classic air filter, closest thing that would fit in there to just catch the particles. Um, usually, I don't have it out the window when I'm using acrylics because I, I can't even you can't even smell it with no mask, no anything, with it not being in the window. <laughs> but when using lacquer-based paints, I definitely need to get it out the window, and I wear a mask and try to protect myself as best I can <laughs> from the lacquers. <clears throat> so. Now, that, I was going to show the painting of the Vallejo Metallic Steel around the exhaust nozzles, but when I started painting, I positioned myself or twisted myself in the chair in such a way that you were basically looking at just the back of my shoulder. <laughs> so, um, after I did that, I masked it out. Uh, this is where I'm doing the Tamiya Rubber Black. And I've got it masked out with little balls of blue tack stuck on the end of a toothpick. And I'm just spinning the stick to try to get a nice even coat on there. And with Tamiya, it's awful to brush paint Tamiya, but with the nature of the balls I'm using to mask out the rim of the tire, I need to finish making it look really nice because there's a lot of not painted parts of the t the rubber part of the tire because of the blue tack but at least there's none on the white rim so i'm gonna have to brush paint it and this is where my palette comes in the handy which here in just a moment i'm going to <laughs> i mean normally i would just dump it out but here in this case i have painted it i set it to the side and by the time I get my palette out, dump it, because it's already thinned. I've thinned it plenty to go in the airbrush. But now, I set it off to the side, clean up the airbrush, get the colors ready for the next one. And by that point in time, the tires are ready, and I go over there, add a couple of drops of paint retarder, Tamiya paint retarder, to the slowly trying to thicken up Tamiya black rubber paint. 
and then finish brush painting around the rim to make it look perfect. And this is, I've already masked out the missiles and I'm just hitting it with some gray around the tips, but I don't know if that's the right color for it or not. I, that's just what I went with. <clears throat> so, and then I'm just finishing up all the little detail painting here so that I can move on to the decals and the other things. But in this one, I have used blue tack rolled into tiny worms that I have used to mask out the camouflage pattern as best I can for according to the instructions. Now I didn't go all out, but I've heard that the blue tack does a nice softer lines. I was going to give it a shot and it looks pretty good for the most part. They're not real sharp lines, so it looks good. Um, and I did pretty good on getting them even. And then I used just regular masking tape to finish covering it up so that it wouldn't get everywhere else. Um, I can't remember if I used more than one color or not, but I think it's all the same camouflage color that I put in the spots. And I'm just, first time I've ever done anything like this, and I'm impressed with how it came out. Um, I did not do the inside of the fins because, one, I forgot, and then, two, I thought it was good enough because this is a palette cleansing kit that I am doing. I think I had this kit done in just a few days because I was in the middle of putting a gazillion decals on the Ravel 148 F15. So in between the four or five days it took me to get those decals on, I built this kit as a palette cleanser. And this is me putting the clear coat on. I think I'm just using Pledge Future or Pledge Floor Wax or otherwise known as Future. Or yeah, so I'm just spraying that on to get a nice smooth surface so I can make my life easier when it comes to getting the decals on. Now this one only had a handful of decals to go on it, so I wasn't it literally took me half an hour and I had all the decals on this one. And then I went back over it with another coat of clear and then I just popped on a dull coat with some testers some rattle can dull coat. And this is the finished product. I'm trying to improve my model photography, but it's getting there. I think I've got some other ideas to try on the next one. And it came out pretty good for a quick little visit. Um, I did put a little weathering in the wheels, just a little Tamiya panel liner, and wiped it out. And well, and there it is, a little Hasegawa egg plane. Well, I hope you enjoyed.